Do you want to hear something crazy? I went from 100 kilograms to 130 kilograms in my bench press in just under two months, right? Here's a picture of me from a while ago. Here's what I used to look like. Here's what I look like now. And here's me benching that weight exactly 130 kilograms for bench, right? So do you want to know how I did it? Let me tell you a story, okay? I used to be very weak as a kid, right? This is me, is a picture of me when I was about 15 or 16 years old, right? And I wanted to become strong. I wanted to do anything it took to become strong. There was like a unlocked character in the video game of my life, some kind of thing I imagined in my mind, a story of what I wanted to become. And that wasn't there yet. And I was like, there's something there. I'm trying to like chisel an image out of like a marble piece. And there's something in there, but I haven't discovered it yet. So let's go on that journey. And that is where it all started, right? Started my gym journey, started lifting weights, started doing things. And here's the thing, right? A lot of experimentation experimentation was involved, right? I watched a bunch of videos, got advice from friends, did the right thing, did the wrong thing, made mistakes, made injuries, and made and spent thousands of pounds in gym memberships as well. And that is not just the only cost. The biggest cost of all was the eight years of time that I spent between those ages of 15, 16, and right now I'm 24. That is the biggest cost of all because time is the most valuable resource we have. It's the only truly limited resource we have in life. Money, we can always make more, but time, we can't make more time, can we? Right? And so that is the part that I want to focus on. Eight years of time. Right? And 100 kg is a pretty good bench press, right? It's not too bad. If someone told me they benched 100 kg, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty impressive. How long have you been going to the gym for, right? But for eight years of like pretty decent obsession with the gym, that was something that was a bit underwhelming to me. Something that I... I wanted a little bit more out of eight years than just 100 kg, right? It just didn't seem quite matching with the amount of efforts I put towards that, right? So my progress was like this, right? I would start here, I start at zero, and then get some motivation, get to this point, right? From A to B, and then, you know, maybe I'd lose motivation, get to C, and then maybe I'd train with a friend, get to D here, and then I'd do something incorrectly, I'd go to E, and then stagnate here, get to F, and then... All these different things, right? G, H, I. And over time, it would just not really be much progress in general. It would generally be like a slow, general increase, but this was very slow, right? I wasn't really making any progress that I could be proud of. It was just a, a happenstance, right? I happened to be getting a little bit better, not in any way that I could sense, right? It would be like, oh, I happen to be lifting, you know, 10 kilograms instead of eight kilograms on my bicep curl, right? Maybe that would take like a year to happen, or maybe that would take a couple of months. Like it would change over time and it would just be a process that I just couldn't really get control of. It was very underwhelming. It was very frustrating for me to go through this process, right? It was too slow, right? So yeah, the progress was very slow. My results were very average and the effort I would put in was disproportionate to the results that I got, right? So I'd I'd watch so many videos, I would do so much research and I'd do, maybe it just wasn't working, right? I just, I would try and guess, oh, maybe it's this, maybe, it just wasn't working for me, right? And so one night I decided, you know what? I've watched enough videos. I've watched and read enough books and seen enough of the gym and the inside of a gym to condense my knowledge into one piece of information. Perhaps I can make this work for me this time, right? So I sat there this night spending hours and hours and trying to come up with some kind of computational thing, system where I can like maybe measure my one rep max on something, come up with a program, come up with some kind of system that I could use to develop my strength in the gym a lot more than I had been up until that point. So I was trying really hard and really trying to nail this down into a single point that maybe could help me. And then I thought as I was building this, I could help everyone else, you guys who are watching this video. So that's the purpose of me making this video, I want to share what I discovered with you today, right? So I came up with this action plan, okay? And here's my progress along that that whole time period, right? My progress along a time, I would try thing here, right? Thing there, thing X, thing Y, thing Z, thing A, thing B, right? It wouldn't really work, my progress would be slow going along this highlighted bit here until I reach that eight year point. And on that one night, 
a big explosion happened, right? And I went to the moon in terms of my results, right? This two month period, right? After that one night, I went to 130 kilograms in my bench press and it skyrocketed my strength in general in that two month period, right? Insane amount of growth, just because I applied a certain lesson or a certain set of lessons that I had learned in that eight year period and actually took action upon that, right? It was a dormant amount of information, something that was sleeping within me that suddenly exploded. I was like, that's what to do. It's like a light bulb moment for me, something that I just, at any point, I could have had that one light bulb moment and it could have exploded me. But after eight years, eight years of knowledge compounded into that one night and get the, and got the results that I got to show you today, right? So what are those results? So this year, January, I was benching 100 kg for four reps. And after testing what my one rep max was, I got to about 115 for one rep, right? And in March, these were the results. 130 for one rep, 120 for four reps, 110 for seven reps, and 100 for 12 reps, right? Whichever way you look at it, I've increased my strength dramatically, right? If you look at my four rep max, so how much weight can I press for four reps? It went from 100 kg to 120 kg, right? That's a plus 20% increase in my strength in the four rep range, right? If you wanna look at just the weight, 100 kg, let's see how many reps I can do 100 kg for now. 12 reps, right? That's a times three increase in strength, right? Let's say you just wanna look at the one rep max. I did 115 for one, and now I can do 130 for one, right? That is a more than 10% increase in the metric for measuring strength, the one rep max. Like no one can argue with that. A greater than 10%, right? Greater than 10% value in increase in strength in just two months. And that's the point I want to focus on today. Just two months, it doesn't take that long. Okay, this isn't like a, uh, you know, five year plan, 10 year plan. This is just two months. I accomplished these gains and I want to do the same for you in just two months. I want to really focus on that point. Two months, not a long time at all in the grand scheme of things. Just eight weeks. Just eight weeks. Okay. And above 100 kg is a notoriously difficult place to be, a notoriously difficult place to make gains, right? It often is, it's slowed down. People slow down when they get to that point. Like gains are very hard to make there, but I still did it. I still did it. So let me show you how in today's video, right? So just to remind you, this is what I look like right now. And this is me benching that exact weight. That is 100 kg, 130 kg, sorry. You can count the plates if you want to and pause the video here. But that is 100 kg done effortlessly. I think this is a point that I locked out. I finally just pressed it, locked out. And that's the end of that rep right there. Fantastic. So my name is Dylan Alexander, and today I'm going to teach you how I did that without the scars, right? So the scars being the eight years of the time I spent learning about the gym and making mistakes and not making progress, the thousands of pounds of gym memberships I spent on, right? So eight years, thousands of pounds, and the confusion I had, right? With one person telling me this, another person telling me that, a friend telling me this, make a mistake here, injury there, this, that, 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 that. None of that anymore, right? I'm gonna teach you how I did it without any of these problems that I went through. Let me save you the trouble. Let me save you all this hurt and pain. Let me give it to you in a very concise way. I'm gonna do that using our philosophy, right, on this channel, which is not to do things like everyone else is doing things, right? Generally, people who are, you know, NPC characters, people who are sheep, if you want average results, then do the average thing, right? But if you want to think outside the box, if you want that spectacular result, that unique result that is incomparable to the rest of humankind, then you have to think outside the box. Become a thinker, become someone who is willing to do something that is unusual to get those results. Become a thinker and become that unique individual. Don't stay a sheep, don't stay an NPC, be a thinker, right? So, the plan here, right? Step one, I'm gonna take you through a five step plan as to how I got to benching 130 kilograms and increased my bench that quickly. Then we're gonna go through a Q and A. I'm gonna answer some of your questions that you put in the comments below. 
and hopefully that will round out everything that I need to say about this. But if you have more questions, feel free to comment below as well. I'll answer those as well. So don't worry about that. I'm still willing to answer even more questions. Okay, let's begin. Step one of those five steps, the basics, right? And I have a story here, right? When people talk to me about losing weight, right? There are niche bits of advice and there are basic bits of advice, right? And I heard this niche bit of advice, right? This, this, this is the kind of thing you might hear on TikTok and things like that. And it's the fact that, oh, if you, if you drink cold water, it burns more calories. So if I drink cold water, that will help me lose weight. That, that's the thing I should do, right? This like kind of niche level TikTok advice, right? But the basic advice is not to eat a whole plate of Oreos every day, a whole sleeve of biscuits every day, right? And I will, I'll get people coming to me saying, that eat a plate of Oreos every day, and then they'll tell me, oh, no, 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 it's okay, because I, I drink cold water, and that, that, will be, that, that will be the thing that makes me lose weight, right? When really, we know that the very important thing is to not eat that plate of Oreos in the first place, right? Like, that's the basic thing, right? We need to focus on this, right? This is the basic stuff, and this is what needs to be focused on, rather than the niche things that, honestly, we don't know, even know if they work or not. Right? So if we don't know what, if, whether they work, then we need to focus on the basics first. We can do that as well if we, man, if we manage to master the basics, if we can get a hold of the fact that, okay, I'm doing all the basics. I'm not eating Oreos. I'm eating like apples and healthy things and like meat and things like this. Then maybe you can choose between cold water and hot water and that might make a difference, right? But the basics come first. The basics are the priority here. And so... What does that mean in terms of the bench press? What does that mean in terms of gym in general? Well, for this context, we're going to talk about four exercises. Just four, okay? I know it seems very little, but have a look at these, okay? The first is the bench press. Obviously, if you want a strong bench press, you need to bench, right? You can't avoid that. Obviously, you need to strengthen your bench press somehow, so benching is a good way to do that. You can do that with barbell or dumbbell, right? This guy's doing it on an incline, which means there's a, a slight angle from the vertical, or sorry, the horizontal, that he's inclining that bench at, and dumbbells are a viable way to do that, right? So dumbbell or barbell is great, okay? In the calisthenics world, there's dips, right? I love dips. I don't think people should avoid dips. I think they're great. Some people get slight kind of shoulder pains when doing them, but I think that's a a different issue that I'll talk about later in this video, but dips are a great way of working your pressing movements, right? What we're working with here with the basics are basic pressing movements, so right? So at the flat bench, we're pressing like horizontally. So if I do this, it's horizontal, right? If I bench incline, it's vertical, so I'm pressing kind of upwards. And if I'm pressing with dips, I'm pressing directly downwards, right? So it's basically the pressing movements that we want to work with because pressing is the exercise that we want to strengthen here, right? And push-ups are the same, right? Push-ups are the calisthenics version of the bench press. Really good alternative because a lot of people, I feel, when they lift weights, neglect the push-up because, oh, it's too basic for me. I'm too strong to do push-ups. That's not, not a great way for me to grow my chest, grow my pushing muscles, right? But I disagree, especially when we look at things like this. This is called a deficit push-up. He's got his hands on boxes, if you can see the board right now, and that allows him to go deeper into the push-up than he would normally if it was just the floor. And so push-ups can be really challenging. It's a very good way for you to kind of mix up your training routine. If you're just training with weights, push-ups are really good, right? Even I do push-ups now as well. It's really good to kind of, even as a drop set after you do weights, it's a very good way to kind of have that body control and it's it's not something to discount at all. It's very, very good to work on that pressing movement. It's very, very nice. Things that I don't like, things that I don't recommend for this is things like this, like the one arm pressing movement. This is not a movement that works our pressing muscles, right? This is more of a balancing exercise, right? It's not a pressing movement. It doesn't really work the chest in any meaningful way that helps us towards our goals, right? Not something that I recommend at all, right? The second thing is a plate press, okay? This guy's kind of squeezing his hands on the plate and pressing the plate up and down in this kind of motion. Not very effective when working on bench stuff, right? Not effective, right? Because 
it doesn't really work on that movement. It's more of a kind of tricep exercise. It doesn't really work on that pressing movement. Not effective, not something I would recommend, right? This is good, right? This is called a cable fly, okay? Good exercise, but not necessarily what we want to be focusing on, right? We want to be focusing on pressing movements. So although this is a great exercise, great for the contraction, it does not work the pressing muscles that we want to. So good exercise, but not the priority, okay? You can do this if you want to, but perhaps after we do the things that we recommended in the basics, right? The same with the dumbbell fly. Great stretch on the pecs, amazing. Nothing compares to it, but not what we want to be focusing on for the basics of the bench press, right? Pressing movements are always going to be better for us to gain strength in pressing movements, such as the bench press, right? So not bad, but not what we want to focus on. So these four things, right? The bench press, dumbbell or barbell, dips and push-ups, right? Dumbbell or barbell, whatever angle. You can do incline, flat, or even decline, right? There's, there's decline settings on the bench. If you can have that, then that's also good as well. If you do all those four, I will be a happy chappy. You will be working on those pushing movements and you'll gain strength in those pushing movements and that will help you gain strength in the bench press. So moving on, number two of the five, form, okay? Form is very important with bench press. It allows you to use your strength better, right? Sometimes you will be stronger than you know and because of your form you won't be able to express that strength in the best way so let me teach you how to do that in this next section right here four things to focus on okay so i found this thumbnail online and there's two things here right we notice there's a difference in her back her back is flat in this person in this picture and her back is arched in this picture and the second thing we notice her feet are kind of like neutrally planted here at the edge of the bench and in this picture, her feet are like kind of closer in and pushing off of the ground as well. There's a force exerted on the ground. She's on her toes, pushing off of the ground. So those two things, her back and her feet as well. So those two things, let's break those down first of all, right? The arch in the back, right? So you want your back not to be in full contact with the bench. You want only really your shoulders and your bottom to be in contact with the bench. I know that seems a little bit weird, but this is the proper powerlifting technique that allows you to put more power into the bar, into the press than you would otherwise. You need this kind of level of arch, right? So really try and push your shoulders back like that Jordan Peterson rule, stand up straight with your shoulders back. It's kind of like that, but you're doing it on a bench and you're really exaggerating it, right? You're really trying to lean back and really tuck yourself in at the back there. There's even cases where like when I'm doing bench press, I'll get like a spasm in my lower back because I'm contracting that hard in the back to get that arch, right? So focusing on that, your shoulders and your bottom on the bench like that. It looks something like this. If you see it on a diagram here, it's a very exaggerated benching arch like that, a powerlifting arch like that, right? So the second thing we noticed in that thumbnail was the leg drive, right? There's a force exerted, as you can see in this picture right here, on the ground, right? It pushes off the ground and it's more of a stabilizing force, right? So we can have something to push off of, right? Because if parts of our body aren't stable enough and we're wiggling around, then we can't exert all of our power in our body into the bar and into the barbell for the most powerful bench press that we can get, right? So we need to be planted into the ground, having our feet tucked in a little bit closer into the bench than we are used to, right? A little bit closer to you know, the part where the bar is, right? Closer to us in that direction. That is the leg drive, right? Some people like to have their heels on the ground when they do this, but as we saw in the thumbnail, there was, she was on her toes, right? So it doesn't really matter. Heels or toes is fine. You might want to experiment with different ones and see which one works with you. But for me, in the picture, you can see in the close up here that I have my toes on the ground, right? I actually used to have my heels on the ground. But after some experimentation, I found that toes for me worked a bit better. I found it was stronger, more stable. It allowed me to like put more force into the ground and therefore more force into the press. And that worked for me. So toes or heels, you can choose. Just experiment with that and see what works with you for that. Okay. But have some leg drive either way, toe, toes or heels, right? 
The next thing, bar path. What does that even mean, right? The bar path is basically the path that the bar follows when you are pressing. Pressing, not pressing. So this is basically, it's going to be slightly forward and to the nipple is like the thing that I like to remember for this, right? So straight down isn't really effective for like the maximal strength we want to ex express in this movement. There are some exercises that are like that, but that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're trying to max out our bench press. Really, we want our bar path to be diagonal to the nipple here. This guy's got it like curved in his thumbnail. I think it's more of a straighter diagonal line. It's not completely straight, but it's more close to straight. If you think in your mind of a diagonal line, then that would be the most effective to do, right? So it's a diagonal line pressing forward onto the level, which is on your nipples or like slightly below your nipples, on your stern, like, like the part of your body or the part of your chest, which is like the bony part, that's where I aim for. It might be a little bit different for you depending on the shape of your body as well. This is a bit different, right? Normally for gym lifts, it's a straight line. We expect to see a straight line. So for the squat, the bar path follows a straight line up and down. For the deadlift, the bar path follows a straight line up and down. But benching is the different factor here, right? Benching, we actually go a little bit forward. So it's a bit diagonal now, up and down and a little bit forward. So adding those together, it makes a diagonal as we see here in this diagram there. So thank you very much for this image, very helpful. And the one thing I like to remember is to the nipple, right? If you forget everything else, to the nipple, it's a bit of a funny thing to remember. That will help you remember when you bench as well. So that's good. Now grip width, the next thing, right? As you can see, there are styles of gripping which are narrow, right? Styles of gripping that are moderate and styles of gripping that are wide. This is the one that we want to focus on here, right? Wider grips tend to be stronger, but up to a point, obviously. You can't like obviously like widen it until like you're, you're basically touching the bar to your chest. We can't do that, right? We need to have a fixed grip, but a wider grip is better, right? Wider is stronger, but find your comfortable grip width because at a certain width, your wrists will start to hurt and ache and we don't want to risk injury in that area. So depending on the size of your body, we need to kind of expand the grip width week by week, like finger length by finger length, right? So if, you, if you're gripping in a certain area now, then increase it by one finger length, one finger across and then do it again. And then the next time, and the next time by one finger, it kind of helps us adjust slowly enough so that we can find our comfortable place, right? So for me, when I used to do it, measure it both hands, by the way, right? Both hands. So what I'm about to say apply to both hands. What I used to do was measure from about this point here, right? So I used to put my thumb on that point here where the smooth meets the rough part of the bar called the knurling, right? So the smooth and the rough, I would have it like this, and I would grip the bar like this, if you look at my face right now, right? But now, I put my ring finger on this smooth ring right there, right? And I grip the bar like that. I put my ring finger down first and then grip the bar like that on both hands so that I can make sure it's an equal distance from the middle of the bar or equally across the bar, so it's equal, right? So there's no imbalances in how I'm gripping the bar. Sometimes I see people gripping the bar just willy-nilly and it's it can cause imbalances and it it's sort of a better way for you to kind of maximize the strength output as well because you know that it's exactly through the middle that you're exerting the force right and that's the best place to exert the force from right so yeah make sure you do that measure up both hands okay to be exactly correct so of course too narrow is not strong enough and too wide is wrist pain right but you want to err on the side of a bit too wide right and you'll find a point where you're wide enough that you don't have wrist pain. So no wrist pain, right? None of that wrist pain. And then you will find a place where you have the ideal grip width and you will be a happy chappy too, right? There we go. So we have the form checked off here, right? Four things to check off here. The arch, the leg drive, remember the heels or the toes, drive your legs into the ground either way. Number three, bring the bar path slightly forward to the nipple remember right that's the one expression i want you to remember to the nipple like arnold schwarzenegger to the chopper to the nipple imagine old arnold schwarzenegger saying to the nipple and you'll never forget that the rest of your life all right and the fourth thing is the grip width right if you have all four of those you will be a happy chappy and so will i because you're progressing in the gym 
And that is a great thing for all of us, right? Okay, next bit. Part three, PR every single session, right? So, okay, what does PR mean? Before I get to, uh, before I get ahead of myself and not explain that, PR means a personal record, right? Personal record. So this means basically when you have a record of whatever you're, whatever weight you're doing, so XKG, how many reps, right? This many reps. So let's say it's 100 kg. How many reps can I do that for? Can I do that for eight reps or 10 reps or whatever, right? And that's my personal record at the moment in time. And I want to try and beat that to get a new personal record, right? That's what the personal record concept is, right? But how do you do that? Every single session getting a, a new PR? What? That's crazy, right? The way we do this is we work with six different weights, right? This might sound complicated, but let me tell you how this works, right? Six different weights. So let's say your one rep max is around 100 kg, right? You're gonna work with the weights that are under that because that's the max you can do, obviously, right? So you're gonna work with 90, you're gonna work with 80, maybe in the weights between there. So maybe 95, maybe 85, right? Maybe even 75 below this, right? And so we have six weights here, right? So we're gonna try and work on the rep PRs for all those weights. So let's say we're gonna go back to 75 kg. Let's take that for example, 75 kg. Let's say our previous rep max for that was eight reps. Now we're gonna try and get nine reps, right? And so with all of these weights, there's always a new PR around the corner. And so that gives us a chance to get a PR every single session, if that makes sense, right? If we're working with six different weights, then it's very much easier for us to progress in that way, right? If we're working with one weight, then that is what makes it difficult, right? That is what makes it kind of like, I, that's impossible to get a PR every single time we're working on the same weight. So that's why we juggle six different weights in this system, right? And let me tell you some more details about that. First of all, track it, right? This is very, very important, whether it's on your phone or on a piece of paper like this, track it know what your PRs are. If you don't know what your PRs are, if it's a question mark in your mind, I often have people coming to me think, telling me, right? Oh, 100 kg, I don't know how much I can do that for. Maybe six, maybe maybe five, mm, I don't know, I don't know. And so when you don't know, right, let's flip it around. If you do know, I can definitely bench 100 kg for five reps. That's the best I can do. Then you know, next time you want to push for six, then you know that, right? And you will put every last bit of effort into that last rep because it matters the most, right? But if you don't know that, then you'll be a bit willy-nilly about it. Your mental won't be there. Your focus won't be there. And you'll miss that rep because you didn't track it. You weren't in that zone where you were tracking that weight. And because of that, you weren't in that zone where you were able to push yourself just beyond what your limits were previously at, right? And so tracking it is much more necessary, not just to keep you organized, right? I'm not here to just like make you a productivity guru and like journal and like, you know, organize things. It's for your strength. It's for your strength. To maximize your strength, ma tracking it matters a lot, okay? I'm just gonna open a window because it's very warm in here. So the next point, you have to have a spotter, okay? This is another thing, okay? I know you might be thinking, oh, it's gonna be something about health and safety. It's the boring point there, but no. Listen, when you're in the gym, you know what? I'm just gonna show you this picture. You'll get the idea if you see this picture. Look at this guy's face, right? Look how intensely he is trying to push that weight up there, right? He is only able to do so because of this guy at the top spotting him, right? Because he knows he is safe no matter how hard he tries. Because if he wasn't there, if he wasn't there, then he'd be in danger, right? And because of that danger, there is a fear, right? And fear limits the amount you are able to do. So to eliminate that fear, we need this spotter here. He is very important for our mission, right? If you have some friends that go to the gym with you, ask them, if not, grab a stranger and ask them to spot you for a bench press. Most people know how to do that. And if you need to give them instructions, give them instructions, right? So when I'm benching, 
I don't need a lift off, for example, and then just catch me if I fail, that's all I need. Give them that simple instruction and they'll know what to do, right? And so from the behind here, he will be spotting that way. Normally, there's a platform here for him to stand on and he can even more easily help you with that bench press as well. So that's why it matters more. This guy is eking every last rep that he can. Every rep, right? Every rep counts when we're doing something like this and we need that intensity and that won't be there if we don't have a spot. We can't push ourselves past our previous limits if we don't have a spotter, right? And so that's why a spotter is very important. It's not just for health and safety, it's for much more than that. It's for our strength, especially, right? And it's an easy way for us to help each other out in the gym. The fourth thing out of these five things is bench more. I know that seems basic, but it seems obvious as well. But it's surprising how many people, you know, stray from the basics, right? Like in step one, they'll do everything apart from bench and wonder why their bench is not growing, right? It's very simple. Frequency, bench more, bench more, okay? That's as easy as it is. Three times a week is optimal, right? And you might think that is a very high amount of benching to do every week, but you will get used to it, right? If you're not used to it yet now, if you're benching once a week maybe, do twice a week, and then three times a week in the next week after that. And then you'll get used to that kind of that kind of strength. You might be thinking now, I do one chest session a week, and I, it's, it's crazy, I hate doing that. You don't have to do everything in your chest session, right? Just bench. Just bench three times a week and see how you get used to that, and then add things on top of that if you need to, right? So the main message there is that you'll get used to it, right? Try it out three times a week. I know it sounds like a crazy amount, but you will get used to it. And this is a very big part of how it becomes easy to progress in bench press that quickly. It's because you're doing it more. While everyone else is doing it once a week, you're doing it three times a week. Imagine the progress that compounds compared to that other guy who's doing what everyone else is doing, who's being the NPC, who's being the sheep there and doing what everyone else is doing. You have to think outside the box and do this extra work. And trust me, you will not overwork yourself. I know people are telling me this right now as I'm, as you're watching this video, probably telling me, oh, that's overworking. You're gonna, you're gonna lose gains that way. No, right? If we're doing little enough, then we can do it often, right? It's a kind of a minimal training routine like this, right? I'll explain more how that works later in the video as well. Number five, be married to the bench, right? Get down on one knee, get the ring out, propose to the bench and marry the bench. Like seriously, this might be a bit of a joke, but you need to have the attitude. Focus on the bench, fall in love with the bench, right? Be addicted to the bench. This might be like a, a drug to you now, right? Have it your main thing. Your bench is your main thing now. Even if you do nothing else, if you get into the gym, just do bench, right? There have been times where I've been too busy to gym but I come in, like not even, I've been like in jeans, right? In jeans and like boots and things like that. And I come into the gym, I'm like, you know what? I can do something, I can do a bit of bench, right? I have like my belt on, my jeans, my boots, my jean jacket on. I'm in full like outdoor wear, it's like winter. I come in, I do that bench press. And then I go home. I'm like, I say hi to my gym friends who are there and they're like, what are you doing? What are you wearing? I'm like, I'm just gonna do a bit of bench, I'm gonna go home, right? Because I was busy in the day, but I was married to the bench. Right? That's the attitude you have to bring to the bench. You can't just do this willy-nilly and think, oh, oh, I can skip this day, I can skip that day, it's fine, it's okay. No, you have to be focused on this. It matters above everything else, especially in the gym. And that's the thing, the attitude you have to have, right? Save your energy for it. Right? Don't do other stuff. Don't do too much other stuff. Like maybe you're training for a marathon, you're training for this or training for that. Like save your energy. If you're training for a marathon, you're running a lot in the day, then... I'm sorry, you're not gonna progress in the gym as much as someone who isn't training for a marathon and who isn't wasting like a, a lot of energy running like 20 miles before the gym session. Obviously, it's not gonna be as effective that way, right? That seems obvious, but you need to hear this sometimes. Sometimes it's the most obvious piece of advice that people need to hear from other people for it to make sense, right? Me, I cheated, and you find out. I'm just kidding, right? I did dumbbell flies. I know you can say, oh, what about the basics? What about the basics? Just one set 
after every single session of bench, right? Afterwards, it was the priority that was lower than the bench. Yes, right? Bench press, I did, you know, six, seven, eight, nine sets, right? Nine sets. And then afterwards, I did one set of dumbbell flies just to get that nice stretch on the pecs. It's very good for that purpose to get the stretch mediated hypertrophy on the pecs. And that's a wonderful thing to do, but only one set. And that's all I did, by the way. Bench press, one set of dumbbell flies. That's how I got that amount of growth in two months. Right? Before you would worry about, oh, overworking, oh, three times a week, it's not. Bench press, dumbbell flies. That's it, three times a week, and you will make gains, I promise you. If you do it as intensely as I'm telling you, you will make gains, I can promise you that. And that is everything. So, too much information? I got you. I wanna give you something for free here, okay? The full program, 100% free, and here it is, right? It might look a little bit complicated right now, but I'm gonna go through this process where we input a mass here and we go through this whole thing and go through this way and that way and that way. I'll explain all that in just a minute, but let me tell you how to access that right now. If you wanna get it right now and like click off the video right now, let me tell you how to get that. The first link in the description below or the pinned comment, that's how you're gonna get it, right? That will take you to a page that looks like this. It's my community page, you join the group right here and that will get you to a page that looks like this and the bench program is right here, right? Right in the main bit where it will always be and in the future, I'm going to put it in the classroom bit right there, right? That's where it will be in the future, right? If you're watching this like maybe a year from now or something like that, it might be in the classroom bit, okay? But if you're watching it maybe a week from now, then it will be in this main link here, right? What is this? Because it's so cool, right? You might be asking, I hear you asking right now, right? What is it? Basically, it's a community page that will be free for a limited time, right? For a little bit of time, I'm gonna make it free for the first few people who join because I, I really believe in this process. And if you join, you will make it a better place for, for us and for everyone else who joins. And so if you get it now, you will get it free for life, right? Why does that matter? Because I will put it back up to $129 a month and that will stay forever. So go check now. If it's free now, you can join for free and keep that price for life, by the way, right? You keep that price no matter what happens, even after I bring up the price, you will keep that free price, okay? So more about that later. I don't want to clog up this video with that message. Let's get back to the program. So program walkthrough. I'm going to take you through how exactly to do this in a step-by-step -step process. So make this full screen. If you're watching this on the phone, try and zoom in a bit so you can see the steps that I'm going to write about right here. So here, at the very start, you're going to input your one rep max, okay? This is measured by you going to the gym and seeing how much you can lift, right? I'm not talking about something you did like three years ago, I'm like, oh, I did, I did this weight like three years ago. No, something recent, right? I benched 100 last week, good. I benched 80 maybe two weeks ago, good, that's fine, right? Try and max it out and see what your starting point is, truly, right? When I did it, I got to 115 and that was my starting point, right? That's what I had to put in, in that yellow box, right? Once you enter into that yellow box, the entire rest of this program will calculate itself, right? This box, you don't need to touch. This box, you don't need to touch, right? All of this stuff will handle itself and calculate itself, right? I spent a long time figuring out the formulas of this spreadsheet, and so you don't need to do anything. Only the yellow box. If there's one thing you take away from this of how to use it, the yellow box is what you need to change. That is it. The rest of it, keep the same. Don't mess around with it, okay? So, explaining this here. The start weight will calculate your target weights, right? You have three heavy weights, two medium weights, and one light weight. What does that mean? Let me explain in the program over here. So the program, the multicolored bit here, right? You can see, oh, excuse me. You can see, I'm drinking sparkling water, by the way. That's why, that's why I burped, not because I'm, 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 I'm a pig, right? You can see that the heavy weights will change every week until the third week, which is where they repeat, right? After the third week, the heavy weights repeat. In the medium weights, after the second week, they repeat. And on the light weights, after the first week, they repeat. This is because it is easier to progress with lighter weights than it is to progress with heavy weights. That is why 
we will have six different weights to work with and we will work with them in this specific frequency, right? This is what works the best and what I have found to work the best. And this is how we are able to do things like achieve a PR every single session, right? That's how we do it, right? It seems impossible, but this is how it's possible, right? This is how, right? I showed you the proof at the start. We're from 100 to 130 in two months. This is how I did it. Here's how I did it, right? And that's the goal, right? If you can see down here below, add one rep each time, at least one rep each time, you lift the same weight to achieve a PR. After six weeks, test your one rep max, okay? This is a six week program. Typically, after a long session or a long period of time where you're benching a lot, your body overall will need some rest. So take some time away after the six week intense period where you're not benching as much, or maybe you're benching lighter weights, right? And so that will be what it is. If you don't feel like you need any rest, by all means, continue with the next six weeks and put in your new one rep max value that you've tested, right? So the warm up. let me just erase some of these arrows to get out of the way here. The warm up. So the warm up is also automatically calculated here, right? So calculated for 100 kilograms is 50 kilograms, 65, 80, and then carrying on until we reach our target weight. 50 kilograms is 10 reps. And 65 is five reps. And then from 80, it's one rep, one rep, one rep until we get to our target weight, right? So if I, if I ended on 80, then I would do 90 and it goes up in tens typically, right? 80 kilograms for one rep, 90 kilograms for one rep, 100 kilograms for one rep until I get to my target weight, which might be 110 or 105, right? So then I would do that for as many reps as possible. It says AMRAP here. That means as many reps as possible. That's what that means, right? And the cool down is very similar, but also AMRAP here, okay? So it's the same as the warm up, but a cool down, right? So 80 kilograms for as many reps as possible, and same with 65, same with 50, and that's how we do it there. Now keep track of your PRs right here. This is the only other part we need to fill in, right? So all these weights here are calculated by your target weights and we can put in our values of what we achieved with that weight. So maybe 100 kilograms, one rep, right? 95, maybe I can do it for two. Maybe 90, I can do it for four, right? Et cetera, et cetera. You'll fill that all in and that will be the way to do it. Link to the YouTube tutorial, that will be this video right here. So that doesn't exist yet. I will update that after the video. Let me know if that's not there yet. I'll put that in there for you guys, right? And this help code will teach you some things just in case you forgot what's in the video and it will give you a few hints about what this program means and how to use it, right? Cool, so that is the entire program and how to use it for you guys. So reminder, first thing in the description and that pinned comment below that will take you to that page where you can access this program. Okay, so Q&A section. Let me just drink some water before this. This is really aching my throat now. Okay, Q&A. First question. <sighs> Excuse me. What is your advice for me? I want to hit 100 kg, but I haven't done it any heavy lifting because it scares me, okay? Okay. I do understand that process, right? I do understand. Let me just focus on the camera now, not on the whiteboard. It will be a bit scary when you first try to lift heavy weight, but just try and progress over time, week by week. So let's say you're doing 60 kg, a relatively lighter weight, and you can do that for maybe 10 reps, right? And that's the max you can do because you're a bit scared to go to 65, 70, above that as well, right? If you go to 65, right, just feel it out, right? And week by week, just increase by only five kilograms. It won't feel that different, but you'll feel, but you will be able to do it, right? If you can do 60 for 10, you'll definitely be able to do 65 and definitely 70, right? So progress little by little, five kilogram by five kilogram. It won't feel that different and you will get used to the feeling of a heavy weight in your hands, right? What also might help is the form cues that I talked about earlier to making sure that you're absolutely stable and your feet are on the ground and everything like that. And that will help you be able to be comfortable with these heavier weights, right? Sorry, I'm just worried about Shadow, my dog barking downstairs. 
Okay, next question. Bro, which exercise do you think is better for hypertrophy on the lower chest? Dumbbell chest press or flat bench press? Honestly, dips. I know that's not one of your options, but dips is probably the best exercise you can think of for building that lower chest. You're pressing downwards, think about it, right? If you're pressing downwards, it works on the lower chest fibers as opposed to the mid chest fibers and the upper chest fibers, right? It will work all of your chest, but it will emphasize on the lower chest fibers, right? But if I had to pick one for your from your options, I would say dumbbell chest press because with that you get a very a bigger range of motion, you get deeper into the press, and it really triggers that stretch mediated hypertrophy that we want for hypertrophy, right? In general, right? And so that's better than flat bench press where the bar kind of stops our chest and we can't go deeper if we wanted to because of the physical constraints of that exercise. So I would say dips is your best bet there. But if I had to press, if I had to choose, I would say dumbbell chest press because of the greater range of motion. So let me just take up my jumper because it's roasting in here and I'm getting too hot and I'm sweating. And I might pass out soon if I don't take this jumper off. Okay, continuing with the video. Hey bro, super impressive. At the moment, my one rep max on bench is 75 kg, but my goal is 100 kg by the end of the year. How achievable is that? Very achievable, right? So I gained, so I, I tested my one rep max. It was 115 to 130, 15 kilograms in two months. Easy, right? You, you're working on 25 kilograms and you're working below 100 kg. So it's gonna be easy for you. And by the end of the year, so right now it's the start of May. That gives you seven, eight months, right? That's very achievable. You have multiple more times, more time than I had, right? I had two months, you have seven or eight months. Definitely achievable, right? Also, he says here, also what exercises and training do you use to re reach 130 kg bench press? This might sound boring, this might sound repetitive. I just benched more, okay? I, I, as I've been telling you in this video, I benched more three times a week and a lot of sets every time I bench and I really, really squeezed everything I could out of that bench, out to that session of bench pressing using the things that I've told you in this video here. Sorry about that aeroplane, let me close the window. Okay, I think dips might not be, might be a good chest exercise, but I have a fear it might cause injury to my chest if I don't do it properly, question mark. Okay, well, the most common complaint I hear when I coach people to do dips is that they have shoulder kind of pain, right? Or elbow pain. And that's more to do with the range of motion, right? I don't often hear chest um, injury complaints or chest pain complaints, but all of these things are to do with the range of motion, R-O-M, range of motion, right? And we need to progress this slowly over time, right? The problem is people aren't used to going very deep onto a dip bar, right? And that means that their muscles are stretched in ways that they're not quite used to. So the, re the, the way we get about that or the way we get around that is to progress our range of motion slowly over time, right? So maybe you're, you are only comfortable getting to like 90 degrees right now. So progress it to a little bit more than 90. And then one week later, a bit more than that. One week later, a bit more than that, et cetera, et cetera. And that should be able to progress you slowly into the dip in a way that's comfortable for you. And a way that's honestly a very good way to have that very deep range of motion to get that extra hypertrophy bonus there, right? I love going deep in my dips. They, that is where the gains are made most, in the deep part of the dip, in the deep part of a dumbbell press in the deep part of a barbell press. All of these things, the deep part is what really matters for growth in the muscle, right? So that's what I recommend for this, right? Not often do I hear people getting chest injuries or chest pain from dips. Usually it's the shoulder, usually it's the elbow as well. So don't worry too much about this. Just progress your range of motion slowly and you should be fine. Okay. Okay. Hey man, recently I've noticed my chest is kind of holding me back on bench. Would you, how would you recommend getting over that, right? Okay, this is pretty unique actually. I don't often hear people complaining about that their chest is holding them back, right? Normally I hear about the shoulders or the triceps holding you back, right? So that is when you're doing it wrong. Like when you, 
when your shoulders give out before your chest does, you're not doing it quite right. So this is actually a good sign. If you're doing your chest, if your chest is giving out, that's actually a good sign, right? You want it to be so that you're, you're pressing in the right form. It doesn't, you know, ache. It doesn't like kind of like hurt your shoulder or hurt your elbow or fatigue some place differently. For me, when I bench, when I get to failure, it's just a general kind of full body. I've reached my max, right? It just reached my max, just all my body, right? It doesn't specifically my chest or specifically my shoulder. It's just my max in my entire body that I can press, right? So if it's your chest, the solution to that is benching more, right? Benching, if, if benching is like, if your chest is the thing that you need to work on for your bench, then benching more will work your chest. Your body will think, oh, we need a bigger chest for this, right? And that's how your chest will grow by benching more. I know I sound a bit boring there, a bit repetitive, but that is the boring advice that you need to hear, right? You need, I'm sorry about the planes. It appears there's a bunch of people learning to ride planes outside, maybe in this area or something like that. Sorry about that. But the boring advice is what you need to hear. Bench more often. Three times a week is optimal. As I've said, I don't want to repeat myself too often, but that's what I would advise for you in this question. Okay, next thing. Would you recommend only sticking to incline bench press as it results in better muscle shape? Um, okay, yeah, that's it works on primarily the upper chest, right? So it's, it does the chest in general, but primarily emphasizes the upper chest. And that is the muscle that is maybe more visible in clothing. So if you're wearing a shirt or something like that, it might be more visible in clothing. Yeah, that's maybe a, a better muscle shape. My personal trainer, he continues here, my personal trainer is recommending me to do all three variations, decline, flat, and incline, right? But he's suggesting so because if I stick to one, I'd get bored. Yep, yeah, boredom is a very valid concern when it comes to gym training. You need to keep it exciting, right? That's why I said like, you know, be married to the bench, right? Be focused on it, be excited about it, be really, really passionate about it. And that's the only thing that matters. Boredom is a really big factor, right? So very good to, to notice that. <clears throat> Even though he said that just doing incline bench press will be better for aesthetics. Yeah, for if, you're, if your goals are aesthetics, then go for aesthetics. If your goals are strength, then go for strength, okay? I do three sets of each variation. Big win, by the way. Thank you very much. Three sets of each variation. That's very good. I like that a lot. That's, that's fantastic as a bench program. If you're happy with that, then continue. That's great, right? For me, I don't like having just all of my workout on one bench, right? Just adjusting the angle on that bench. I like doing, so for lower, I like doing dips. For medium or flat, I like doing barbell bench. And then for my upper chest, I like doing incline dumbbells, right? That's just me. If that works for you, that works for you. That's amazing. That's brilliant. But I'd recommend switching it up and doing some of these other basics so that you have a more rounded and more kind of able, able-bodied chest, or how do I say this? A more capable chest, right? You put yourself in different positions and that will stimulate your muscles differently and you will get a a better set of skills and better gains as a result from that. So yeah, nothing wrong here. Depends what your goals are, aesthetics or strength, right? So yeah, I'm happy with what you're doing right, right now. So keep doing that, that's fine. W, how do you increase your bench? I'm stuck right now. Well, this, this entire video has been about that topic. So watch this and you will get there. Basic things are bench more often, three times a week, you know, check your form, things like that. Get a spotter, track your weights and things like that. That's what I'm talking about here in this video, right? If you only watched this part of the video, right? Amazing feat of strength, bro, is the next question. For how long have you been going to the gym? Eight years, as I said before, right? Very long time, and that's why I want to condense my knowledge into one video so you don't have to spend that much time in this feat. Good. Next question. It's hard for me to engage my chest instead of my front delt taking out. Taking out? I'm assuming you mean taking over, right? Okay, this, this is more of the problem that people face right now because the last, the, there's a question previously that said about the chest being the, the weak factor, right? Here he's saying the delt being the weak factor. That is the more common thing that people talk about. Super common, right? And this is usually a result of not proper form. So your form is probably not worked out in the right way. So probably you might be having a narrow uh, grip width, a narrow grip width, or maybe you're not doing it to the nipple, right? The nipple, remember? To the nipple! <laughs> right, so something in your form is incorrect. So focus on that. 
watch this video back and check if your form is right. Record yourself. That is a hack that people are unwilling to do because you look like a bit of a, oh, a narcissist or whatever when you're recording yourself in the gym, but it's for the purposes of checking your form. Why do gyms have mirrors? For you to check your form, okay? So record yourself and that's the best way for you to check your form or maybe have someone coach you through it and that's a good process as well. Check your form and you shouldn't have this issue anymore of your front delt taking over. Okay, fantastic. Impressive, what's your split? My split is full body. I discussed this before in a video and I mainly do a split of within one workout. I do one push movement, okay? One pull movement and one legs movement, right? At least that. So three exercises max or minimum, sorry. And then on top of that, I do some additional movements if I, you know, whatever I want to do, right? Whatever I'm feeling on that day, whatever it needs, patching up, whatever. That's what I do. So every workout I do that. That's my full body split. I talk about that in another video if you like. If you want me to talk more about that, then tell me in the comments below as well. So that's impressive, man. My PR is currently 95 kilograms, but I struggle, I struggling to hit 100 kilograms for four months. Any advice? Yes, bench more. I hate to repeat myself again here, but yes, the boring advice is what works here. Stick with the basics, right? Bench more. Bench three times a week, bench more than you're doing now, more than once a week, right? You have to bench more and do the basics, right? Don't get distracted by things. Marry yourself to this exercise, right? You have to focus on that level. It's something that's very, very important to be gaining this kind of progress in the gym, right? That's the advice I have to give you today. Okay, fantastic. End of questions. Good, fantastic. I hope that answers the questions for you. If you have any more, please tell me in the comments below. I'll answer them as well in text form for you guys. I read every single comment, so please do comment below. Okay, full program, just to remind you, 100% free. And how do you get it? We go down to the description below or the pinned comment as well. So I promised you details. I promised you that I would talk more about that at the end of the video. So here are those details right now. This is a community page that's free for a limited amount of time, right? If you get it now, you will have it free for the rest of your life. My gift to you, okay, that's free. 100%. Why do you want to do that now? Because it will go up to 129 a month. Okay, it will go up. So go check now and get it now if it is still free. Okay, if it's like maybe a week or a month from now, it probably still will be free. But after that, it will not be free anymore, right? And that will be your loss. Okay, and you'll pay for that. And you, you will have to, yeah, you'll have to pay for that. More info. <clears throat> It's an exclusive community page, right? So it's a private, no one else can join apart from you, right? And once it is 129 a month, then no one can join unless they pay, right? We'll have live calls. So I will be hosting a call. We'll talk to each other. I will kind of talk to you about your issues with the gym, with diet, exercise, anything you're having trouble with. It's a high value network of very, you know, everyone bringing something to the table here, right? So it's people that are thinkers, people that are not sheep and NPCs, like the philosophy that we have on this channel, it will be the same like that, right? One-to-one -one coaching available on there, right? And online courses that I'll create myself, exclusive content that won't be available anywhere else online, right? Not on YouTube, not anywhere else, not TikTok, Instagram, nowhere, right? So how do you access it? So the video includes all the details. Okay, oh no, bit of a technical issue here. Okay, so this image is meant to be a image of the about page that I showed you earlier. And in the about page, there's a video, right? If you watch that video, it's a 10 minute video and that will show you all the details that you need to know about this program. If you want, about this community page, sorry, if you want some more information and if you wanna click that. So click that and that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that has helped you make progress in your gym. And here's something that we say at the end of every single video, knowledge is power and the power is yours. Thank you for watching, take care. See you in a bit.